Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Advanced Shielded Metal Arc Welding. Topic number 17, Job Practice. Single V-groove weld, butt joint, flat position with backing. The objective of this job practice is to produce quality, complete penetration, single V-groove welds in the 1G flat position with a backing strip using multiple pass stringer beads. The finished weld will completely penetrate into the backing strip and fuse into both edges of the joint without trapping slag. The face of the weld will be smooth and slightly convex with no edge weld undercut. On a blueprint, the symbol for this weld appears similar to those used for the vertical and overhead position welds, as only the position of welding has changed. Material. One inch thick mild steel bars, two pieces. Three eighths inch thick mild steel backing strip, one piece. Electrodes, one eighth inch diameter E7018 and five thirty seconds inch diameter E7018. Equipment. Power source, DC. Protective clothing, gloves, and helmet, wire brush, and chipping hammer. Machine settings. Polarity, direct current electrode positive, reverse polarity. Amperage settings, 80 to 145 amps for the 1 8 inch diameter E7018, and 115 to 195 amps for the 5 seconds inch diameter E7018. The material for this job practice is prepared in the same manner as in previous V-groove practices. Be sure to remove all the burrs on the back side of the bars. Assemble and tack weld the workpiece with a 45 degree groove angle and a 1 quarter inch root opening. Place the workpiece in the flat position so that the weld can be deposited from above the joint. The first weld bead will be deposited with the 1 8 inch diameter E7018. A total of two root passes will be deposited to fuse into both root edges of the joint. The work angle for the first pass will be 20 to 25 degrees from a reference line perpendicular to the work. The electrode is directed at the root edge to ensure complete fusion. The travel angle will be 5 to 10 degrees drag. Start the arc and move along the seam where the bar and backing strip join using a smooth, steady travel speed. Stay on the leading edge of the puddle in order to concentrate the force of the arc on the exposed base metal. Traveling too slowly will allow the puddle to become too large and to flow ahead of the arc. The excess molten metal reduces the arc force on the base metal, resulting in lack of fusion. The molten metal may also tend to roll over slag deposits, trapping them in the root of the joint. If the puddle appears to be producing soap bubbles, slag is being trapped in the weld. If the arc is broken before the bead is complete, remove the slag from the crater area and two inches of the weld bead. Restrike the arc one half inch ahead of the crater and move back. Trace the crater's inside edge to fill it to bead height and then continue travel. When finished, the weld should be slightly convex with no undercut present along the toes and no trapped slag. Be sure to thoroughly remove the slag before depositing the next pass. The work angle for the second weld bead is the same 20 to 25 degrees, except that the electrode is pointed at the opposite junction of the base metal and the backing strip. The travel angle remains the same as before. Deposit the second bead using the same smooth, steady travel speed, 
overlapping one half to two thirds of the previous pass. Do not whip the low hydrogen electrode as this will result in trapped slag. The combination of the first and second weld beads should form a flat face that fuses well into both sides of the joint. Deposit the third and fourth weld beads in the same manner. If slag begins to roll ahead of the puddle, increase your travel speed in order to keep the electrode on the leading edge of the puddle. It may be necessary to use a slight side-to-side -side motion to spread the puddle and obtain the proper bead profile. The third and fourth weld beads should combine to form a flat or slightly convex face. The remainder of the workpiece is welded with the 5 32nds inch diameter E7018. Increase the amperage setting to the proper range. As in previous practices, the remainder of the joint is filled in a series of layers, with each new layer containing an additional bead. A total of 22 beads will be needed to completely fill the joint. The first and last beads in each layer require the same work angle as used for the first and second passes. The intermediate beads in each layer require a gradual change in work angle from 20 to 25 degrees on one side of the reference line to 20 to 25 degrees on the other. Each bead in a layer should overlap one half to two thirds of the previous pass. The outside beads in the final layer should melt 1 16th inch of the beveled edge of the joint to achieve proper fusion. When complete, the weld should have a flat to slightly convex face, not exceeding one eighth inch. There should be no sign of undercut along the toes. Inspect the weld and then continue practice.